Okay, so day 14 update. Uh, woke up from camping, really awesome camp spot to the sound of two strokes, heading towards Mule Creek Trail. Uh, a lot of guys heading up there on their little KTMs and Hondas and stuff to ride what looked like a huge network of trails. Uh, we got all packed up, headed back to Highway 75, went back up over the mountains, which is a really pretty drive, especially in the morning when the sun's coming up over the mountains and everything. And went back through the little town of Ketchum, finally found a gas station with a really expensive gas, and then just followed the traffic all the way back down to US 20, which was slow because it's pretty much the only road. Got on 20, headed uh, west, straight, flat, boring, just droning in between mountain ranges. Um, reached a little town of Fairfield, stopped at, uh, what was that place called, the Wagon Wheel or something, I don't know, a little burger shack that was really good. And uh, talked to some locals there and guy out front I was talking to his buddy and he puts me on the phone with his buddy and I tell him where we're trying to go and he's like oh yeah those are great roads easy for beginners you know no problem ride them all the time you'll love them and one of the things you learn when you're talking to locals about roads and stuff is one person's easy is another person's nightmare so you gotta ask as many people as you can when you're doing that anyway um the original route had us cutting from Ketchum over to uh, some dirt roads north of Fairfield, but I decided to cut that out. That's why we went on down to US 20. But in Fairfield, we got on Soldier Mountain Road and headed north and uh, went up over, uh, I wanna say it was Couch Summit Pass. And it started out pay, but then once you start getting to the actual pass itself, it turns to hard pack, mild gravel, and uh, a lot of washboards, crazy washboards getting up to the top. And then once you kind of get up to the top, it actually is sand, uh, which was kind of surprising. But it's not like deep, crazy sand. It's like, you know, half inch to inch and a half deep. You might have a little bit of ruts in the corners and stuff. Not too bad. Sarah's kind of nervous about it, but she hit every corner pretty much perfect. She just doesn't like that wiggle. And I keep telling her to embrace the wiggle. But she just, she likes to be planted, you know. But she did really well. And it was pretty steep in places and pretty tight in places. And uh, eventually, once you get down off the mountain, it follows, I can't remember the name of the river, but it follows this river forever in this really beautiful valley. Um, I can't remember the name of the road either. I think it's Smoky Road or, let's see. Of course, now I don't want to come up. It's in the Sawtooth National Forest. And uh, it looks like Big Smoky Road, National Forest 227. Got a bunch of different names. Um, I'm not sure what the river is either. It's like South Fork or, there we go. Yeah, South Fork, Boise River. So we followed that basically uh, west for a long time. Uh, not a lot of elevation changes, you know, because you're just following the river down out of the valley. Really beautiful scenery. Um, the road was wide, uh, pretty well maintained. Eventually got to a little spot where there was like a vault toilet rest stop. We talked to some locals that were soaking in the river and goofing off and Right after that, the road narrowed to basically one lane and uh, didn't really get any harder, just narrow, but it's kind of cool, you know, big, huge, gigantic pine trees right up against the road, uh, made for neat riding. Um, again, lots of forest fires have gone through the area and burned all the trees. Um, I guess they don't do the controlled burning out here, and so when they do get a fire, man, it really, it really goes. Um, the original plan was to get to a little town called Featherville, something like that, or Baumgartner or something. And we were going to go north. Yeah, Baumgartner. We were going to go north on Rocky Road up to Atlanta City, but uh, 
one of those locals told us that got really rough and really bad and we were tired it was hot so we decided to just turn south because when you get to this little town the road becomes paved and it runs down to a um, pretty big lake anderson reservoir yeah anderson ranch reservoir uh, we did actually see some other riders in this area which we haven't been seeing hardly any riders the whole trip but it was a really fun paved road you get down if you go down the east side of the um reservoir it eventually brings you out on us 20 which is what we did and that's just a really fun really scenic pretty ride um so all in all the riding for the day was really good you know once we got to 20 we just had to basically slab that over to uh whatever this interstate is that runs into boise idaho i-84 i think it is yeah so while we're cruising down the interstate, uh, Daniel mentioned something about his back tire bouncing or something. And I don't know what he's talking about. So I have him get in front of me and show me and his back tires coming several inches off the ground when he accelerates. Um, not good. So we get to gas station stop to get gas and figure out his back shock is completely blown, has drained all the oil. It's all over the swing arm. He was complaining that he couldn't lock up his back tire on the dirt. And now we know that's because he's got suspension oil all over his brake pads. So his bike is not really rideable right now. Not safely anyway. Um, closer inspection of Sarah's bike reveals that the entire mount that the foot peg, the right foot peg and brake pedal are mounted to, the entire mount is bent backwards probably four or five degrees from where it should be the problem with that is the two bolts that hold that whole bracket to the bike one of the bolts goes through the swing arm pivot the other bolt goes through a bottom engine mount so serious things to change out i mean they're like six dollar bolts but getting the bike apart and getting it changed out would be pretty hard in a parking lot with the tools that we have and of course uh it was saturday so the local ktm dealership i think it's called moto one here in uh, boise we actually met a guy that worked there at the gas station we stopped at. They had a really cool home built adventure trailer and they had bikes in the back of the truck and i spent 10 minutes talking to him but um they closed at like three o'clock or something and they're not gonna be open until Tuesday, nine or 10. So we're kind of stuck. You know, the other problem is the odds of them having those two bolts are pretty much none. Um, so I got two bikes that really aren't rideable right now. And we're kind of stuck in Boise. Um, you know, we got a Best Western room. It was the last room in town for some reason. Uh, a lot more expensive than I really want to be paying for a hotel room. Um, probably going to be here for a couple of days till we can get to the dealership. I'm hoping I might be able to get online, find those parts, order them, and maybe get them sent to the dealership. But, you know, it's just more money. It just never seems to stop. We're just bleeding money right and left. Um, and that's going to cut the trip short. No getting around that. Um, you know, it's still a fun trip, but it's just frustrating. So at this point, I don't know what we're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna head over to like a local grocery store, Walmart. Um, Sarah wants some leg warmers for, cause it's getting colder as we're getting up north and she wants something a little thicker than what she's got. Um, we'll see what happens. Uh, we're not gonna be doing any riding for a couple of days. And then, you know, maybe that's a good thing. You know, last night we were planning on camping, but while we were sitting there in our overpriced king size hotel room, I started hearing clicking noises and sure enough, it started hailing. <laughs> there was a huge storm that came through town, uh, hail bouncing off the side of our third floor window. You could hear it hitting the roof of the hotel. Uh, the bikes were sitting out in the parking lot. Yeah. Uh, and it was super windy and just pouring down rain. So glad we weren't camping for that. That, that wouldn't have been much fun. So who knows, you know, sometimes these things all work out for the better. Um, we'll see how it goes. So I'll update you later. Bye.